before we even started because it is Novak has favourite, obviously, giving up five and a half at minus 125 against to Sitsi Pass, who's getting the five and a half at plus 105. The number is set at 37 and a half with tips minus 110. And it's player total of under over 17 and a half for to Sitsi Pass. Djokovic is at 20 and a half. I mean, you can take this one away, Alex, because tell me how Novak loses this final if it's possible. It is possible. Um, How? This is know, what I want to hear. This is what I want to hear. Yeah, it, it's it's possible, but it, it seems just highly unlikely. Now, we've heard much be made of the quality of his hamstring and much been questioned about what has been made of the quality of his hamstring. But as someone that has watched a lot of tennis players, a lot of basketball players, hamstrings are tough. At a moment's notice, that thing can basically just give out. But I think he's healthy. I don't think that there's any reason to really worry about that. And this is the third time these two men have played in a Grand Slam final. Novak won both those matches three sets to two. Now, they were at the French Open on clay, where maybe Stefanos is a little more comfortable. Um, but the last one specifically, Sitsipas goes up two sets in the final and then loses the next three pretty unceremoniously. I have to think that at any moment of doubt for Sitsipas, this falls apart pretty quickly. So... It's kind of boring to say, but it does feel like this is a pretty comfortable Djokovic win, in my opinion. It's nice. He hasn't really been tested, has he? He looks like he's been machine-like. Yeah, I mean, the biggest test really uh, came from the most unexpected opponent. It was Enzo Cuoco, uh, the Frenchman, uh, world number 191, who managed to snag a tiebreak from Djokovic. And that was in the match he was struggling the very most with his hamstring. And Cuoco played lights out. Uh, and yet still, we look at the other three sets and that was 6-1, 6-2, 6-0. Uh, and that's basically been the score to everyone that's faced him since. And we have some real quality players here, like world number six, Rublev, 6-1, 6-2, 6-4, no problem. Uh, much fancy Tommy Paul, 7-5, 6-1, 6-2 in the semifinal. And Djokovic had a uh, set point on serve for 6-1 in the first set. So he kind of choked to to not get an even more comfortable victory there. And Dimonor and Dimitrov also just completely disintegrated. Uh, Tsitsipas is playing some spectacular tennis, uh, but I just don't see him, uh, even if he plays at the peak of his powers, which he's currently doing uh, on much in much more favorable conditions. Twice he's taken two sets off of Djokovic uh, on clay at Roland Garros. That's his best chance, and he can't even get him there. Uh, and here in Australia, it's Novak's fortress. He's basically invincible, and hamstring looks fine. Uh, and there's really just no betting against him. I think it's either Tsitsipas comes out strong with enormous self-belief and goes up to nothing again to just lose, uh, or it's a comfortable Djokovic free nothing. I really see no in-between there, uh, but I would lean towards the former. Djokovic just looks uh, insurmountable currently. Alex, what do we think of the number, 37.5? Because my initial impression is it goes under. Because even if we see a full set... It could, we could have a one or a two in any of them four sets. Yeah, I agree. I mean, under is, has been pretty good again. A lot of these Djokovic matches, even if you see a tight first set, if they somehow get to 7-5, even 7-6, uh, like Snyes mentioned, then all of a sudden 6-1, 6-2, 6-2, 6-1. There's a bagel in there somewhere. And it does feel like once Djokovic gets going, this thing is, is going to be pretty comfortable. So I like that under. Again, my only concern is if there is a way Sitsipa wins a set here, it probably is in a tiebreaker. So um, th that could be the only fly in the ointment. But I think you again under is a good way to, to, to look okay so we think that he covers the five and a half at minus 125 alex yeah that's probably my favorite bet on the board here um you know we've got some djokovic to win the tournament which is great we get to just let that ride um you know like i just talked about with the total don't mind the under the under is usually a decent bet if you also like the favorite on the game spread the two are not entirely correlated but generally pretty close to one another but again in the off chance we see djokovic do what he's done in, in a couple grand slam finals over the past few years kind of use the first set as a warm-up almost let Sitsipa take the first set and then kind of you know sweep things away in the next three so protecting against that a little bit I'd rather just lay the minus five and a half yeah I'm just thinking to myself that the number must be wrong on Djokovic's games because if he goes to four sets and he wins say 3-1 if he doesn't get beat bagel or one we're going to cover the be uh, 20 and a half because I see him getting a minimum 23 24 games in a in a four set game it's nice 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think there's a there is a slight danger of tie breaks here. Uh, Sisipas has been serving incredibly well this week, and it is worth mentioning that in four of the late last five uh, head-to-head matchups between these two players, there has been a tie break involved, and it's it importantly occurred uh, before even at, like the second set. Uh, no, no, sorry. The third, like before the third set at the latest. So even if it's a straight sets victory, it's it's still uh, it has a pretty high likelihood of, of going to a tiebreak. And then you know Djokovic has to win six games and perhaps not win the set. And then you know from there it's it's guaranteed basically. And if he wins uh, a set, obviously with seven games, and again, Tsitsipas can take a set, you know, instantly there. But it's like I, it's a difficult one for me. Uh, again, I think it's either uh, a fairly comfortable one, and you know, even if uh, he he gets a tiebreak set like seven six, uh, he's still going under uh, if it's a straight sets victory. So we basically need four sets for that. Uh, but if you do like four sets, I mean, I like the player total over. Well, if it's under Snyes, you don't go anywhere near the minus one hundred five. You just go with the three nil set bet in at plus one fifty. Yeah, ex- ex- exactly. And if it's three nil, you're going with Djokovic minus five and a half because yeah, he ain't exactly. winning, even because it's going to be four four four. So exactly. So if you like, I'd say if you like the over, uh, is where I was going with. It. If you like the over, just bet over twenty and a half games with Djokovic instead of the over thirty-seven and a half because he can win in four sets, go under, but still go over his player games. Uh, but yeah, for me, my bet that I have in this one is actually the tiebreak bets. I, I have over uh, one, well, a point one and a half or point a half tiebreak at least one in the match. Uh, as I said, even on clay. Notably, two of these head-to-heads are on clay as well, super slow conditions, and they still play the tiebreak. And, you know, these are super quick conditions. Tsitsipas has been serving well. Uh, Djokovic has been going for his serve a lot. He's been double faulting a lot because he's packing a lot of power into both first and second serves, uh, meaning he's been sporting really high uh, first serve uh, points one, uh, around 80%, and... With Sisabas is serving, he can, especially in the first set before Djokovic really settles in on return, uh, he can certainly take it to a tiebreak. Uh, so that's really the main angle I have for this. I do like minus five and a half as well from Alex. I might tail that because really, no matter how I compute it, it, it really just seems difficult. Even if it's four sets, uh, there's going to be a lopsided set in there, and then Djokovic covers minus five and a half. It's really hard to look past that. Yeah, there is. Alex, what sort of weaknesses are we looking at from the uh, from the challenger into Tsitsipas? A really weak return game. It is really hard for him to win any set where he doesn't, again, get it to a tie break where the returning becomes less important or somehow gets an early break. So it's you're going to know pretty early on what Tsitsipas has, what he's able to do. But if he can't get anything going return-wise in this Djokovic serve, it's, it's over pretty quickly. So, you know, as Snyder's kind of mentioned, Tsitsipas style, it is. He's going to focus on that serve, try to get everything basic into a tie break. You know, a Tsitsipas win here does feel kind of like a four or five set match with three or four tiebreakers in it, something like that. So I think that gives you maybe a feel for what he needs. Are we, are we looking at maybe a gunslinger type early uh, attitude from uh, to sit past that he's basically just going to have to be all out aggressive. And if he's going to obviously stay around, he's going to have to take that first set. Do we see Djokovic winning the first set and the sit pass coming back? Lads, either, either. No, no, the, no, yeah, I mean, it, he, he's, he's been winning. I mean, if it, if it were Clay, he'd had, he'd had a chance. Uh, he's done it before. Like, he was two sets down against Djokovic in uh, Roland Garros of 2020. Uh, and he came back and made that a five-setter. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't be competitive in the fifth, but he did it. Uh, and Tsitsipas is a player that thrives on self-belief and is generally very confident, though he can have his meltdowns. Uh, so it's not like he's going to give up. And obviously for him, he has nothing to lose. It's going to be all guns blazing. He's going to have to go out there because obviously Djokovic is the man to beat. Everyone knows that he's in contention for being the best of all time. Uh, right. So the attitude and the, the play from Tsitsipas has to reflect that. Just go out there and do your very best. But as for winning the match, as much as he tries... He needs to win the first set, possibly the first two sets, or two of the first three sets. He has, he needs to be up two uh, one at the very, at worst to have a chance to win this. Uh, if he doesn't have that, uh, I really don't see a chance for him. Okay, let's have a little look at where we're going to earn some money on top of our futures. Um, 
I, I, I went all in on Djokovic, to be honest. Um, so I'm more than happy just to sit it out. Djokovic, minus five and a half at minus 125 for Alex. Uh, Snyes likes that as well, that minus five and a half. But he's also thrown in the tie um, match, tie, tie break in the match at minus 140. So, uh, but lads, it's Djokovic, yeah? Yeah, it's Djokovic. Okay, let's not complicate it. I like that. Djokovic around the plus 100, minus 110 prior to the start was uh, the best way to go. (laughs) 